This afternoon, we're, during this healing mass, I'm going to reflect upon healing in a particular way. Um, it's kind of the, the three ways that, the reasons why you can um, help yourself to receive more healing in all the different ways that you can put in, in front of God and, and block the healing that he wants to give you. So there's three ways why people are healed and 11 ways why people are not healed. And um, we're just going to go through this this afternoon and encourage you to take these home with you, to pray with them. Um, one of the biggest reasons why we are healed is because of our faith. Um, God, you know, Jesus talks about different times in the Gospels where he encounters people who don't have faith. And because of their lack of faith, he was unable to heal them. And so God wants us to have faith in him. He wants us to believe um, that he wants to heal us because he cares about us. Um, he can heal us because he is all-powerful. And he will heal us in his time, in his ways, in his perfect plan for us. And either we might experience that healing in this life or the next, um, but his healing is possible. It is, it is part of what he wants for us. And so, um, you know, that healing, of course, can come in different ways. It can look different than what we think. Um, sometimes he wants to heal us spiritually and emotionally. We might be praying for physical healing. Um, but either way, um, we want to just surrender to God. We want to trust him. We want to place our complete faith in him. And as we do that, um, we put ourselves in a place to receive his healing. Um, another way that we can heal is when we uh, match our need for healing with the cure, if you will. So um, sometimes we um, ask God for a miracle, right? Maybe we have diabetes and we want to be healed of our diabetes. Um, it's fine. It's good to ask God for healing. Um, but if he doesn't heal us through that miracle, um, he might heal us through doctors. He might heal us through medicine. And we should be open to that as well. Um, so recognizing what the actual need is for our healing and then being open to that. Um, what is the actual need? Who is the actual person that can help us to heal? Um, sometimes, you know, we have a lot of physical health problems, and we're asking God for healing of all these physical health problems. But the main problem is we're not exercising, we're not sleeping, we're not eating a good, healthy diet. And God's saying, if you want to be healed, um, eat a good, healthy diet, exercise, and get enough sleep. And a lot of these physical problems will take care of themselves. So, again, it's important to, to recognize our need. But, you know, other times our need is more spiritual. Um, sometimes we have a need to receive forgiveness for things we have done. Um, a priest can help us with this through sacramental confession. Um, other times, you know, we have a, a need for healing because of things that have happened in our lives um, that, that might require a counselor, um, a counselor who can help us to um, work through whatever trauma we might have gone through. Um, again, just being honest with ourselves, um, where is the need for healing and who is it that can help me with that? And finally, you know, in, in addition to, to increasing our faith, in addition to being open um, to where the need is for healing, um, we also just need to persevere. There's lots of times in the Gospels where um, the person perseveres in their prayer, and they receive what they have asked for. Um, Jesus says, you know, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. Um, he tells the story of the, the woman who um, is a widow. She's a poor widow. She's coming to her master, asking for something, waking him up in the middle of the night, knocking at his door. And Jesus says, in the end, the master will give her what she wants because she 
She persevered. Um, she kept asking. And I think um, we are called to do that as well. You know, sometimes God's healing happens over time. Sometimes it's a process. Sometimes he's asking us to take a specific step. Um, we want the complete healing right now, but he's saying, no, just take this step. Um, we should take that step, and then the next step, and the next step. And as we do that, um, we will come to the place of healing that, that he desires for us and that, that we, are, we are seeking. And so, brothers and sisters, we're called to, to persevere. I think also it's, it's just true that our prayers have an effect on other people's healing, and other people's prayers for us have an effect on our healing. Um, intercessory prayer is, is powerful. It makes a difference. And I think it's, it's, it's worth mentioning that. It's also worth mentioning that we're called to consistently practice our Catholic or our Christian faith. And we are called to consistently practice our faith. We're called to be going to Mass on Sundays. We're called to be praying each day. I'm um, spending time with God, building that relationship with Him. I'm um, studying His scriptures. And we're called to live a full Christian life. And when we're living a full Christian life, we can go to God with confidence and ask Him for healing. Um, if we're just living a lukewarm Christian life, if we're not really consistently following him, um, then we're not placing ourselves in a place to receive um, the healing that he has for us. So I think all three of these, um, faith, you know, figuring out what the need is for your healing and then persevering, um, intercessory prayer and being consistent in our, in our practice of our faith, all of these things are important. But a lot of people want to know, why didn't I get healed? You know, why didn't I get healed? I want to be healed. It doesn't seem like it's happening. Why am I not being healed? And again, the number one reason is, is lack of faith. Um, if we're doubting God, if we're not placing our faith in him, we're not placing ourselves in a place to be healed. So that's number one. Um, number two, redemptive suffering. Um, there are times where God is going to take us through something difficult. He's going to be with us in it. He's going to help us. He's going to give us strength. In some ways, it's going to feel like potentially that he's closer to us than even in normal times if we allow him to be so. Um, but sometimes God allows us to suffer because something good is going to come th through it. Um, he's going to teach us something very important, maybe something that we can't learn any other way. And so we have to be open to that as well. Um, a false value attached to, to suffering, number three. Um, this is kind of the opposite where people are saying, well, I'm just supposed to suffer. I'm supposed to suffer all my life, so I'm never going to pray for healing. Um, you know, I'm just going to endure it. This must be God's will. When actually God normally wants us to pray for healing. Um, and Jesus, you know, throughout the, the New Testament, he's always healing. He's always healing people, which tells us that God wants to heal us. And so um, we're not always just si simply called to suffer with a sickness. Um, we can bring that to him and ask for his healing and ask him to show us the path to that healing as well. Um, if we're trapped in sin, especially resentment or unforgiveness towards another person, and we're asking for healing, um, God, that's going to block our healing. Um, if there's serious sin in the way um, God wants us to confess that sin, receive his forgiveness, receive his mercy, um, that's actually very, very important to him. Maybe even more important than our physical healing is the spiritual healing that God wants to give us. And so when we put resentment and unforgiveness in the way, it's blocking our healing. We need to go to confession and get that out of the way. I'm um, not praying specifically. Um, this is a big one. A lot of people just pray, you know, Lord God, if it is your will, if you are listening to me right now, maybe you will heal me. You know, that's not good enough. We want to pray very specifically, very directly. The more specific we can pray, um, the better. And trying to understand what the source is for our need of healing is important. 
um, looking at that and, and asking God to show us, how do I pray specifically that this might be healed? Um, there's actually a great advantage if you're a doctor or a nurse or a medical professional and you understand the human body very well. Um, if you're praying with someone for physical healing, you can use that knowledge to pray with them very specifically for the kind of physical healing that they need. And generally speaking, um, it's more effective when we do that. Again, um, another thing that blocks us is just a fault, faulty diagnosis. Uh, maybe we're praying for physical healing when what's needed is, is inner healing. Uh, maybe we're not forgiving that person and it's causing us all kinds of physical problems because the weight of that anger and resentment and hatred and rage is having an effect on our bodies. And when we're not forgiving that person, that, that just remains. But once we forgive that person, once we address that spiritual healing that we need, um, the physical healing takes care of itself. That happens a lot. It happens way more than we realize. Um, and so, again, um, sometimes we're just focused on the physical healing and we're not addressing the, the need for spiritual healing. Um, and you know, there's lots of different scenarios with that. Um, so again, we, we want to ask the Holy Spirit to show us um, where is my need for healing. Another one would be a refusal to see medicine as a way in which God heals. Um, God does heal us through medicine. Um, he has blessed us with medicine. Um, not all medicine is perfect, um, but a lot of the medicines that we have these days are very, um, very much a means for our healing, and we should see it that way. Um, even in my, my own life, um, I have benefited greatly from, from medicine. I um, experienced some depression in my early 20s. Um, it was very serious. It went on for a period of years, and when I was 25 years old, I found a medicine that could help me with that. I still take that medicine each and every day, and it still helps me, and I'm very thankful for it. I'm very thankful for the people that um, research so that I could take a medicine that would um, really um, prevent me from just having depression all the time. And it would help me, and it has helped me um, to live a normal life, and for that I'm very thankful. There's also just the natural means of preserving health. Um, again, sleep, exercise, a healthy diet, keeping balance in your life. All of these things are really, really important. Um, sometimes it's just not the time. Um, some healings are instantaneous. Um, for some, there is a delay. For some, healings occur gradually through a process. And for some, um, healing just doesn't seem to occur at all. And, you know, oftentimes I would say maybe the physical healing that you're asking for isn't occurring, but the spiritual healing that you really need is happening and will happen um, if you're open to it. Um, and again, another thing that blocks our healing is when a different person is to be the instrument of our healing, possibly a different doctor, possibly a different um, person that could pray with us, that could help us in different ways. And finally, just the social environment prevents healing from taking place. Um, we live in a society right now where um, there's lots of problems, there's lots of confusion, um, there's lots of issues that, that we're facing, and um, that causes a lot of stress, a lot of tension, a lot of anxiety. And really, we want our homes and our parishes and our churches to be places um, where people can come and receive healing. And for sure, that's what I want here at the Chapel of the Holy Cross, and that this might be a place where many can come and, and receive healing. And so, brothers and sisters, hopefully I've given you some tools this afternoon, some things to think about, some things to pray with. Um, I do believe God wants to heal us. We're going to pray directly for that after communion and in our intentions and throughout this Mass. And so we do believe in a God who, who heals us, who is a healer, a healer of body, mind, and soul. And so this day we come before him. I'm opening up ourselves to that, 
asking him to take away anything that's preventing us from receiving that. And we pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.